Well, we're here in front of the historic Shipley Barn in Cookville, Tennessee on the campus of Tennessee Tech University. I'm Dennis Duncan. I'm a faculty member in the College of Agriculture and Human Ecology, and my background is agricultural education. Today, we're gonna to talk about this barn and the historic nature and the architecture of such a structure. So here at the Shipley Barn, which is a, a historic structure for the state of Tennessee, built in the 1830s by a well-known architect and designer for the Buck family. The Buck family was very prominent in this region of Tennessee in the Upper Cumberland. And you'll notice one of the unique features of this barn is the roof line. The gable roof has a peak, which is common for the historic English style barns. And this is a classic example of that. The main structure of the barn is the peaked roof, but then you'll see there are two structures on either side of the barn, which were added later to add for more storage and livestock capacity. You may notice in the, the, the middle structure of the barn, the driveway or entrance point is short in comparison to modern barns. That is probably a six or eight foot doorway in that barn. And when this barn was constructed in the 1830s, that doorway was, was perfect for livestock. Chances are this barn was used at some point to dry tobacco. Uh, but by today's standards, it's, it's too small. You couldn't get a modern piece of farm equipment through that doorway. Uh, and so that's one of the reasons we see these barns being modified so that we can use them for modern day technology. Another unique feature of the Shipley Barn is the quilt that you see to my side. Quilts are very common across the United States and Canada, and they often are just a piece of art that one wanted to paint, and they're usually painted on the barn or a separate sheet which is attached to the barn, and they're often representative of the artist. It's a folk piece of art uh, that just adds a little bit of character and color to a barn. Now we're on the inside of the uh, historic Shipley barn uh, and a couple of really unique features of this structure. Uh, you may notice that the roof above my head is not very high and that is very common for these old historic barns because height was not as much of a concern as it is today with modern agriculture. You'll notice the wall of this structure is made of large timbers that are hand hewn. And when I'm referring to hand hewn, when this barn was built in the 1830s, sawmills and methods we use today to cut wood into lumber were not available. So you would actually take a log, cut the tree down, take the log to a site, and with a special axe, with vertical and horizontal cuts, you would actually square the log or have two squared sides so you could stack the logs. And this is a really good example of hand-hewn timbers that are used in this barn. So we moved to a, a different structure here, or different area of Shipley Barn, and we are or in what's often called the dry floor, or main driveway of the barn. So this is where you would have, at this time in the 1830s when it was built, would have been horse-drawn equipment. So you would have horse-drawn wagons and other equipment that you'd pull in with a team of horses. For example, hay you'd bring from the field to the barn, and it would be placed in the hayloft, which is above my head. You'll notice this has a fairly large hayloft structure in the barn. Also to my left, you'll notice the wall of the, of the dry floor area is made of, again, of those hand-hewn timbers. Something else that's unique about this barn is the dovetail construction. Dovetailing you find in modern furniture or in historic furniture, but not that common in barns. But, so they connected the timbers together with a dovetail structure. There's, there are no nails, there are no pegs, there are no adhesive, just the weight of these timbers are what are holding this structure, keeping this structure upright. Another feature of the Shipley barn is the foundation. Uh, the foundation is, there's no concrete in this barn. We didn't have concrete available in the 1830s. So they set this barn on hand-hewn timbers. They're horizontal along the base, you can see those. And those are sitting on rock. Well, you may notice as you look down the side of the wall, the wall uh, has dips along the sections. So what's happened over time is those timbers have either cracked or they've warped a little bit just because of the sheer weight of this structure. But again, they're setting on rock that would have been harvested from this region of the Upper Cumberland and used as the foundation. We're in the second floor of the Shipley barn, which is the hayloft. Loft was typically a section above, a head above 
the structure, and as you can imagine, the hayloft was storage for hay. Uh, sometimes we'd store grain in a hayloft as well to keep it up above the ground, away from moisture. And so we've got hay here in the, in the Schlippi Barn hayloft. But I, when I, to my left is something unique to this barn is it's a chute, a hay chute, uh, much like a laundry chute in a home. So what we would do with this chute is we would take either loose hay or baled hay as we have here, and we would drop it down the chute and livestock would be on the ground floor and it would make it easier than to feed. And there are multiple hay chutes in this barn for each of the pens that would have housed livestock. Thinking back to the, the dry floor, main driveway of the barn, there were doors to protect the interior of the barn and protect livestock and equipment and commodities like hay and grain. So the Shipley barn has a, what I refer to as slatted, a slatted doors, which allows air movement through the barn. You'll notice that there are boards with spaces on, maybe they're on a four inch center. And that again allows the air movement through the barn that can help dry hay. And chances are there was probably tobacco hung in this barn at some point. And so that air movement was important to dry that tobacco at harvest time. Now we're gonna move away from a historic structure and look at a more modern day barn that is very common across the United States and other areas of parts of North America, uh, referred to as a pole barn. And we'll show you in a minute where, where that name originates, but the structure is a wood structure, wood framing with metal siding. And you'll notice on this building, uh, both the siding and the roof are made of metal, so it's very low maintenance. One of the advantages of a pole barn structure is the size, the sheer size of this barn Notice the doorway where you would pull in a piece of farm equipment or a large truck. That door is probably 14 to 16 feet high. So you can get a, a very large piece of equipment in this building, much different than the old historic barns, which maybe had an eight or 10 foot doorway and really limited you in what you could use in today's modern agriculture. So we're inside the pole barn. And as you'll notice, we, we want to point out a couple of things that, are, that refer to a pole barn. The framing uh, are typically four by four or six by six sawn timbers, which you'll see in this barn, and they're spaced about every six to eight feet apart, hence the pole barn. So these structures you'll notice are made of modern day lumber, cutting two by fours and four by fours and six by six lumber dimensions. Also unique about these barns is what holds the roof on, and it's referred to as a truss. You'll notice above my head, um, the trusses are often made of two by four, two by six, two by eight lumber, and they're attached with those. You'll notice those square metal plates with many holes in those. Those are braces that are attached to help hold each of those pieces of lumber together. Hence, and you'll notice how the width of this barn and those trusses are holding up a considerable amount of weight. And it's very common. You'll know, There are no posts down the middle of this barn, and we don't need that extra support here because of the way those trusses are manufactured. I'm standing in front of another uh, unique structure in regards to farm construction or barn construction. This is a early to mid 20th century barn with a gamble roof. And you'll notice there are different angles on the roof line of the structure, different from the English style structure. And this was unique because it provided more hay storage for the farmer. Uh, the hay loft in this building is above the door. You'll notice the door on the front of the barn where you would drive equipment and, and horses into the barn. And then above that is the loft. And so this type of architecture just provided more storage for the farmer. You may notice that the, at the peak of this roof line on the barn, there are horizontal boards or slats. And there's also two diamond shaped holes in the barn. Those are important for air circulation. So if a farmer had hay in the hay mow in that second floor of the structure, you'd want air movement through there to keep the hay dry and then also to provide some ventilation for livestock that may be residing on the ground floor of the barn. One other feature about this barn that is very common in barns is that at some point during the life of the barn, the farmer added what we sometimes refer to as a lean-to structure on either side of the barn. This barn actually has one on each side. It provided more storage for equipment and oftentimes housing for livestock. So, I wanted to show you in the inside of the barn with a gamble roof, notice the, the architecture and how what we refer to are the, the rafters are built in this barn. 
Notice how the wood is cut at different angles. This entire area was mainly used for storage of hay that would have been fed to animals. So another feature of this hayloft and this gambrel uh, architecture roof is um, a, an exit point in the side of the barn where the farmer could have either brought hay up to the loft from the ground or could open the door and drop hay down to the ground to livestock. So it was just another way to make uh, it easier to move hay back and forth, which was all done by hand.